In this detailed video guide, I will explain my process for creating a continuous zoom effect, step by step using Midjourney Discord. You will see each of the prompts used to generate the artwork for the effect and master each of the zoom options selected throughout the process for its creation. When generating artwork for this effect, three zoom options are available to you. Zoom out 2x, zoom out 1.5x and custom zoom. In this tutorial, you will see the results produced from each of them as they are used for scene transitions when creating the effect in this video. That's not all. In addition to generating the artwork, you can follow my process, step by step on screen, for joining the images together using video editing software to create the effect. I used Premiere Pro for this, but many other programs including non-paid versions have the same capabilities. In part one of the video, each of the generated images will be displayed on screen accompanied with the prompts used to create them. Each zoom will be illustrated on screen at the point it was used with the reason for its selection, before moving to part two. In the second segment, I share my screen with you after the images were imported to Premiere. In this section we will cover numbering the images before adding them to the timeline and why it's useful to do so. We will also cover sequence settings, aspect ratio and other settings used for the video. I will share keyframing each image for zoom settings and opacity adjustments. Finally we will add the music soundtrack, adjust it to match the clips and fade it out at the end of the video for a smooth ending. Part 1 the base image used for starting the zoom is on the left of screen. The prompt used to generate it is being displayed now. A zoom out 2x was applied to the image. Four options in the middle panel were generated. I upscaled option 4 as it was the most visually interesting. I also liked the framing. The image on the right is the upscaled version. From here a custom zoom was selected. The prompt entered for the zoom is coming up next. The panel on the left was generated using the prompt on screen. Image 2 from the selection was upscaled. This image was selected because of the framing and shape of the outer posts. A custom zoom was applied to it using the prompt on screen now. This zoom generated the panel of images on the right side of the screen, from which the second was selected. For me, the triangular framing and planet above the model worked well. I also thought the colors of the lower section of the image adds to the aesthetic. The upscaled image can be seen on the left of the screen. From here, a custom zoom was applied using the prompt on screen. The output from the prompt is the panel of four images positioned center screen. Image 2 was selected as the colors create a strong visual aesthetic. The overhead framing works well. A zoom out of 1.5x was selected to see more of the environment. From the panel of four images generated, the second was upscaled. A zoom out 2x was applied as the environment being generated still looked interesting. This produced the panel on the right. Option 2 was selected because the foreground had the most visual interest and color for transitioning to the next scene. From the upscaled image on the left, a custom zoom was applied using the prompt on screen to produce the panel of four images. I opted for image 4 because of the simplicity of the composition in the top section. From here, I transitioned to a new scene using a custom zoom. The prompt on screen was applied. Image 1 with the spectators looked interesting so this was upscaled. The other options were a little too dark for the zoom. A custom zoom was applied to the upscale using the prompt on screen. This generated some additional interest in the sky. Image 4 was upscaled from the generated panel. A custom zoom was used on the upscaled image to add new color to the scene, using the phrase White Arctic Desert in the prompt. Option 2 from the panel was upscaled. The color was adding some interest to the scene. To see more of the environment, a 2x zoom was applied. Image 3 was upscaled. The environment was beginning to look like a winter scene. I continued along this theme using the phrase Ski Resort in the custom zoom prompt on screen that was applied to the upscaled image. Option 2 was upscaled from the panel as the light on both sides of the composition added interest to the scene. For me, the mountains in the backdrop also complemented the image. Happy with the upscaled version, I decided to add a rocket and some galactic interest to the scene. From the options generated, the rocket was the obvious choice. The custom zoom prompt on screen was applied to the upscaled image on the right. Adding the phrases Space Rocket Party and Beautiful Planet worked well to continue with the galactic theme. Image 3 was upscaled because of its visual appeal. The appearance of the rocket landing and planets beginning to appear was adding interest to the zoom. The custom zoom prompt was applied to the upscale to generate an astronaut which added depth and some additional framing for the next transition.
Another custom zoom was applied to the upscale to create a new environment. Option 2 was upscaled and a zoom 2x was applied. Image 2 from the panel was upscaled. The spectator on the left of the image gazing into the environment added some interest to the scene. I continued to zoom out from the upscaled image with another zoom out 2x. The first image on the panel generated was upscaled this time because the light in the top half of the image was adding some nice framing to the scene. A custom zoom using the prompt on screen was applied to the upscale to create a theatrical element to the zoom and start bringing closure to the effect. Option 4 was upscaled as the curtains on either side of the image added interest and color to the composition. From the panel on the left, I upscaled images 2 and 3. I chose the third image as the light being introduced at the top of the image added visual appeal. The custom zoom prompt on screen was applied to the upscale and option 1 was selected from the panel. The image resembled a stage performance and suitable finale for the zoom. I zoomed out from the upscale using a zoom 2x to see more of the environment. The third image was upscaled as it was the brightest and most interesting. The custom zoom on screen was applied to the upscale to add additional light to the foreground. A custom zoom was applied to the upscaled image using the prompt on screen. The aim now was to bring the zoom to an end with a colorful transition. Option 4 from the panel was upscaled and the custom prompt on screen was applied. The second image from the panel was selected because of its color, symmetry and interest with people present in the foreground. This was upscaled. Then a zoom 2x was applied to it to create the final sequence I was looking for to end the effect. Option 2 was upscaled from the options presented as it offered the strongest framing in its composition. The custom prompt visible on screen now was added to end this zoom effect with the final image on the right of the screen. Part 2 In the timeline, navigate to the images displayed in the import window. Note the images have been numbered from 1 to 29 in the order they should appear in the timeline. If this step is missed in the process, it will create additional work later with reordering of images. The sequence settings used for this video have been set up as follows. Frame rate selected was 24 frames per second. Frame size used is square format using 1080 on both sides as the video was designed to be shared on Instagram. At the end of the panel, maximum bit depth and maximum render quality were both selected to optimize the output quality of the video when rendered. When importing the images to the timeline, there are two steps involved. First, import images 2 to 28. Note, the first image is not imported. Drop this selection onto video layer 1. Once complete, go to the effects control window. Click the keyframe button for scale. Go to the first frame of the first image on the timeline and adjust the zoom to 200%. Now go to the end of the last frame of the first image. You can do this by tapping the down arrow if using a Mac and then tapping the left arrow. Once complete, adjust the scale to 100%. To copy these settings to apply them to all the images on the timeline, go to the Edit menu and select Copy. Now select all of the images on the V1 layer. Afterwards, go to the Edit menu one more time and select Paste Attributes. When the next dialog box appears, just click OK. Now for the second step of importing the images, Go to the Project panel. Select Image 1 to 27. Note the last image is not selected. Now drag the selected files across to the timeline and add them to the V2 layer. Go to the first frame on the first image. In this step we will be keyframing two settings in the Effects Controls window. The first is the scale timer, and the second is the opacity timer. At the first frame, both the scale and opacity settings will be set to 100. Move the playhead to the last frame of the first image using the same method as before and adjust the scale to 50 and the opacity to 0%. Copy the settings that were applied to the first image by going to the Edit menu and clicking Copy. Highlight all the images on the top video line. Go back to the Edit menu and select Paste Attributes. Just like the previous step, once the next dialog box appears, click OK and you're all set. To review the applied settings in action, move the playhead back to the start of the timeline and play by clicking the space bar if using a Mac.
Now it's time to add a soundtrack that suits the effect. I chose a piano track called Secrets of the Earth from Epidemic Sounds. Once imported to the project panel, drag it onto your timeline under the image files. Before modifying the duration of the audio track and adding fade to it, I first adjusted the length of the effect to 59 seconds. The reason for choosing this duration was to fit the maximum real length for Instagram to post it on my page. If you would like to connect with me on Instagram, my account is at can't pick that. To resize the duration of the clip, go to the clip menu and select Nest. Add a name or not for the clip and click OK. The clips will merge together. From there, go to the clip menu again and adjust the speed duration of the nested clip by dragging the time to a suitable length for your project. After this step, let's move on to trimming the audio track by moving the playhead to the end of the clip, selecting the razor tool and making a cut. Just delete the section that's not required. To add a fade to the audio for a smoother sounding finish, go to the audio transitions menu in the effects panel. Select exponential fade and drag it onto the end of the audio clip. The fade is quite short as standard, so I usually expand the timeline a little to see it better. Select it and drag it back on the audio track a little to extend it. Almost there. Time for one last play of the clip with audio attached to check everything looks and sounds good before exporting your video. To export your media, add an endpoint at the beginning of the clip by tapping the letter I on your keyboard. Move the playhead to the end of the clip and tap the letter O on your keyboard. Go to the file menu and select export media, choose your export settings, destination to save the file and that's it. If this tutorial has ignited your passion for the intersection of art and AI, please give it a resounding thumbs up and subscribe to my channel, where more awe-inspiring content awaits. Dive into the depths of artistry, explore the myriad of possibilities, and unlock your creative potential. Join me on this extraordinary journey, where art meets technology, and imagination knows no bounds. For those thirsty for additional knowledge, tips, and tricks to unravel the mysteries of art and content creation with AI tools, check back soon for new content.